In this video, I'll be covering some more examples on formulation of linear programming problems. So this problem talks about it's a Pacific paper company produces paper rolls with a standard width of 20 feet each. So the roll has a standard width of 20 feet each. So this is the roll length given to us. Special customer order with different width are produced by slitting the standard roll. So the roll is slitted between like this. So it depends upon what is the requirement of the length. And accordingly, this is slitted. Typical orders which may vary daily are summarized in the following tables. So we have order 1, 2, 3 and this is the desirable width given in feet. The desired number of rolls are also mentioned here. In practice, an order is filled by setting the knives to desired width. Find the minimum number of standard rolls to be slit according to the given data. Formulate the problem as LPP model so as to minimize the total wastage. To understand this question, we can see again this was the width of the roll and this width is given to us as 20 feet and we want to slit it between of this so that we can get the desirable sub rolls based on the desired of the customers. And to understand that we can see in the diagram, we can see at the back of this, this is a main roll. And the machine has certain settings of the cutting. So you can see this is the cutting of the sub rolls. And a similar situation may appear in a cello tape master roll. And then we got a smaller sub rolls. Okay. So this is called the slitting problems or sometime we also call them as trim loss problems. And we wish to produce a standard sub roll of a desirable length as given an example here. And also we need to understand the wastage. And now let's look at the data again given in the problem. The data given to us in the problem is this. So where we have three types of the order, desired width and the desired number of rows. So for example, let me to consider only first situation in which the first order have the desired width 5. So if I want to understand this desired width 5, the total is 20. The total width is 20 feet. And if I want to take a sub roll of 5, 1. So this means this individually is 5. The next is also 5. I can take this one pattern. And how many possible sub rows I can cut from this? Obviously 4. So for 20 feet, I can have 4 sub rows of 5 feet width each. Okay. This is possibly the first pattern that I can have. Now let me to write here the desired width. We desired the width to be of 5 feet, 7 feet and 9 feet. This is given to us in the question. We want the possible patterns for this. The first possible pattern, knowing that the main roll has the length 20, so I can have 4 from here. In that case, I do not have from 7 and 9 and the wastage is also 0. There is no wastage. Now another possibility is, and in this case, it is possible that the first setting is for 5 feet. The next setting of the machine, where it is going to slit, it is 7 and the remaining is 12 feet. So again from 12 we can either have a 7 or 5. Suppose I make it as 7. And then what would be. So there would be a sum. There would be some wastage. And that wastage how can we understand. There are 2 rows of 17 feet. And 1 for this case. So 1 for 5 and I have considered 2 for this. The total feet will make 14 plus 5 feet. And this is 19 feet that we are going to get from the main roll. So the wastage is of 1 feet and similarly we continue now searching the other patterns that this is the required width we started and these are the possible patterns or these are the possible settings of the machine. Okay, It is not said what is a fixed setting if it was mentioned in the problem that this is a fixed setting and then you want to optimize so there is nothing to optimize we know that how many sub roll we are going to get but the given to us is that it is a 20 feet width and out of that I need to slit based on the required width so these many possible pattern i got and the minimum number of requirement asked in the problem is written here now i'm going to now formulate the problem let xi be the number of standard rows to be slit according to the setting i because we got six settings so we have here now i varying from one to six and we want to minimize this total wastage so to see that let's look at the first pattern in this case in the table that i've given here the first pattern is where I'm taking a 7 plus 9. That means I've utilized 16 units. So there's a 4 feet is a wastage and 3 feet is a wastage and so on. We introduce now this wastage factor here corresponding to each pattern. So that's what I'm going to introduce here in the last case. And we look at now individually in the table. 
so this row will give me the five width requirement if i look at now here and i'm going to consider that x1 is the number of standard roll cut it on this pattern x2 is on this pattern and so on x6 on this particular pattern so 0 into x1 plus 2 into x2 plus 2 into x3 plus 4 into x4 plus x5 this one will give me the first constraint this is for 5 feet roll similarly read the data of 7 cm this will give me the second constraint and i'll get the third constraint and obviously the decision variable are greater than or equal to 0 because they are the number of standard rows either we have the standard roll or we did not have so there is nothing about negative so we got the objective function i'm going to rewrite because we wanted to involve here the wastage so objective function is 4x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 plus 0 into x4 plus 0 into x5 plus twice into x6 this is objective function and these problems are also called trim loss problem i have already mentioned this case had this question been asked that only minimize the number of standard rows and it don't want to know what is the wastage factor so we could have simply uh, uh, find the objective function minimize it which is the summation of these sub rows standard sub rows in this given problem a dairy firm has two milk plant daily milk production of six million liters and nine million liters respectively each day the firm must fulfill the needs of its three distribution centers which have milk requirement of 7, 5 and 3 million liters respectively. So we have two plants and there are three distribution centers. So this is a supply problem or we may say this is a transportation problem. The milk can go from plant P1 to D1, P1 to D2 or P1 to D3. Similarly, plant P2 can also send the supply to D1, D2 or d3 we may look this as a network problem or we may also specifically can call this as a transportation problem now in this transportation problem what is else given to us let's look at the problem again cost of transportation of 1 million liter of milk from each plant to each distribution center is given in hundreds of rupees below so the table gives us the cost this is the cost given to us these are the plants here these are the distribution center and if plant 1 sends milk to distribution center 1, it cost 2 rupees per liter. And similarly, 3 rupees, 11, 1, 9 and 6. Formulate the LP model to minimize the transportation cost. So we first decide on the decision variable. And while choosing the decision variable, what we can say is that plant P1 sent some commodity to D1. And here that commodity is the million liters of milk. So at this moment, we do not know exact quantity, but I may say that X1 is the quantity that is supplied from plant P1 to D1. Similarly, P1 to D2, X2 is supplied. P1 to D3, X3 units of milk is supplied. And P2 to D1, Y1 unit. P2 to D2, Y2 units of milk. And P2 to D3, by three units of milk so now rather than taking y1 or xi i would rather take decision variable as xij this means the units or the commodity supplied from ith source supplied from ith plant to jth destination ith plant to jth destination so it's very easy to read that if I talk about X11, this means first plant, first distribution center, X12, first plant, second distribution center, X21, second plant, first distribution center and so on. So I can read it very easily. I stand for the plant. So there are two plant. J is the destination. There are three destination. Now by looking at this, we can see because I varying to two and J vary from three. So there are six decision variable, which is simply multiplied two and three. There are six decision variables. Now, based on these six decision variables, I want to uh, understand again my objective function. The cost has to be minimized. It's a transportation cost which is involving. So, I want to minimize. And per unit cost is for the first plant to first distribution center, that is 2. This is per unit and I have supplied X11 unit. Plus, look at now the second plant 1 and second distribution center. So this means 3 is the per unit cost and we have supplied x1 to 
first plant second destination move on like this 11 x 1 3 plus second plant first distribution center this is x 2 1 plus 9 x 2 2 plus 6 x 2 3 so that becomes the objective function and we now have the constraint so what are the constraint subject to this is not such that this is subject to these are conditionals condition is that we have supplied condition is that we have supplied x11 unit here x12 unit here x13 here the total supply is 6 unit so this cannot exceed 6 unit so if i sum my supply this will always be less than or equal to 6 and if i look at now the second plant here the total supply is this one it cannot exceed 9 So this implies x two one, x two two plus x two three is less than or equal to nine. Also, I have to see based on the distribution center. The demand of this distribution center comes from the two plant P one and P two. So if I look this a uh, vertical constraint, if I sum x one one plus x two one, this has to make sure that this demand is fulfilled. The milk that we receive from plant one and plant two should satisfy the need of the distribution center one. and look at the second constraint now from here x12 plus x22 should be greater than equal to 5 x13 plus x23 is greater than equal to 3 so this handles our supply constraint these handle our demand and we want that all the decision variable because the supply cannot be negative it is all greater than equal to 0 for every i and j and we got here the objective function we have the constraints now and we have the non negative restrictions also here is the non negative restrictions this completes our formulation of this particular transportation problem so this is what is expected from us when we have a real situation we want to extract data and we want to try to convert this into a formulation part now again i want to emphasize if the formulation comes out to be linear it is a linear programming problem while formulating and while writing the data into mathematical formulation if we see that objective function or the constraint any one of them turn out to be non linear then it moves to the non linear category we'll learn how to solve these uh, linear programming problem in next videos